Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to build in some sliders. So our sliders here are kind of like we want to build out some controls, right? And our other example, or uh, when we were working earlier, we saw that we had we were able to control a whole bunch of different parameters. We can kind of take a look at that here, right? So I want something similar to that. And what we did in class is we looked at the fact that we could simplify kind of building some of this with a little bit of Python. So let's take advantage of that same idea, right? So I'm going to add a new container. Whoa, right? Which is like all of a sudden everything is a little bit bananas. And remember, that's because our align order matters. So we want this to be fourth. We want it to be down here at the bottom. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to set it to be my parent. My parent's width. Parent bar width. And now in terms of height here, I'm going to go ahead and just set it to be about like 250 tall for the time being. I think that's going to be tall enough. Uh, and now we're ready to actually add some sliders. So let's, well, let's change the name here also. I'm going to call this post controls or, yeah, that seems good for me. I'm happy with that. Now, we're going to use the similar kind of replicator technique that we used before, which, you know, it, it caused us a little bit of headache when we were doing it in class, and that's all right. Um, it means that we get to practice the same technique. It means we get to think a little bit more abstractly. It means that we do get to work a little bit faster. It will feel like we're not working that fast initially, but it centralizes where we're placing all of our changes, which is actually a really important thing. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get started here. So to dig into this, we know again that we're going to need a table. Oops. We know that we probably want to attach that to a null. We'll scoot that on over here. We're going to use a replicator to make a bunch of things for us. We're going to add a slider because that's actually what we want to do. Now we can see it's here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that for a second. Let's come back up here and let's make sure that we align these top to bottom. Already looking better. Now I like to use again, just like we saw before, I like to use this first row as my headers. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my exact dimensions. I know that I'm going to need a label for these. And what we learned in class is that we actually wanted two labels, right? We wanted like a, uh, a parameter label, a friendly label, and then we also wanted a par label. Now, you certainly don't have to do that, right? You could use just one of these columns. Uh, this, again, was to kind of address a concern of how can I have a very pretty name? And maybe let's call this pretty instead. How can I have a pretty name with lots of spaces in it, but then have a parameter name uh, that's a little bit cleaner uh, over when we go to kind of connect a few other things? Now, we also happen to uh, find out that uh, well, let's leave this here for right now. We all know that we're going to add a few other things in a, in a hot second, but we can leave this be for the moment. Now, we're going to go ahead and set our slider, right? Let's make sure that it's as wide as our parent. Oops, looks like I misspelled something there. Parent par width. We can probably leave this right here at 20 for right now. That's a pretty good, pretty good height for our... Uh, the vertical dimension of our slider. Now I happen to know that I want my first slider, right, just like these other control panel elements. I don't want it to display, but I do want all the replicants to display, right? And again, I've turned on the display parameter here in this callback. We can go ahead and bring this null over as a template. We can bring our slider down as a master. Before we do that, let's call this master one, we're going to want digits, and we're going to want it to be cloned. Okay, now we can drag this down, 
and set it to be the master operator. Okay, so we've got two of these things so far. Now I happen to know uh, that I've got eight parameters that I want to control. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this number of rows up to nine. Right, and it's nine because I'm going to include my header in that. I also, I'd like just a little bit of space between these, so I'm going to come up here and change my line margin to two. That way I've got like a little bit of visual space in here, uh, which I like a little bit more. Okay, let's, let's start uh, making a few things happen. So let's, let's kind of work out a few pre-labels first, right? Because we know that we want something to show up here as we get started. So I want black level to be a parameter. And I'm going to use uh, just kind of a, a much more simplified version of that for the parameter name. I want invert. I want contrast. I want a hue offset. I want to be able to change the in low and the in high and the out low and out high. And you can use whatever names you want here. Great. We're going to come back and make some more changes to this in just a moment, but for right now, let's go ahead and use that to get started. I like all my operators kind of neatly arranged, so pardon me with my very kind of compulsively making sure everything is arranged very tidily. Mm. Let's make sure we've got one other thing set up here. On our panel, we're going to want to display a few things. So again, you guessed it, null final is what I'm going to set as a background top. Now, I didn't do that before I made all these clones, so I'm going to go ahead and recreate all my, I'm going to re-replicate to make sure that has kind of moved right on over here to all of my replicants. Okay, now let's add a text top right in here. Excuse me, a text top, not a text dat, forgive me. On our common page, we're going to go ahead and set this up to look at our parent for dimensions, parent.par.width. And the same thing for height. There we go. We probably don't need this to be more than about like 10 tall or so. If we connect this to a null and call this null final, you can bet your bottom dollar you know what's going to happen. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of all this text that says derivative, because we're going to stick in our own text. In this case, we want to look at a dot. So I want to look up one at null one. Okay, that's like, right, so like we can see here that we could switch all of these this way. So we can use the same technique we learned before over here with our movie bin. I'm going to use my parent. My parent's digits. Pair int my parents' digits, right? And now I've got a nice little set of all these things. Lovely. I like that so far. That's really it's really quite handy. That's good. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to kind of do here? Right? I've got a few other things I probably want to think about uh, in this whole process. So the other thing that I kind of want to do is I want to make sure, you know, this is a real nitpicky thing on my part, but if we l watch this knob, we'll see that it kind of slides off the edge of this container and, like, pushes things around a little bit. Uh, personally, this makes me crazy. So frustrating, in my opinion. Um, so we're going to do a few things here to kind of fix that. And what's going on there is that if we look at our knob, its X position, right, where this thing lives, is determined by my parent's panel, right, its U value times its width, less the parameter, uh, less its own parameter of width divided by 2. And you might be saying, what on earth does that 
even mean, Matt? That is so confusing. I don't understand. Well, if we take a closer look at what's going on here, well, you can kind of understand that a little bit better. So we're using the u, right? So here's our u value of 0 0.5. We're using this normalized value of 0 to 1 to help determine where this thing is. Now, if we want to change this 0 to 1 value into pixels, right, because this is really, uh, the x position is defined as pixels, then we need to multiply that u value by the actual width of the parent's panel, and then we need to subtract my own width, right, the size of this thing, split in half, that way I only fall off half on either side. Okay, you might feel like it's not worth kind of switching that around to make it prettier, and we can disagree on that. <laughs> That's just fine. So what we're going to do here to make all that work is uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this panel over here. We're going to use this, and we want out of this the W and H, or excuse me, we don't want... Uh, this puppy, what we're going to want is we're going to want a parameter. There we go. So in this parameter, we're going to look for the width and height. Or excuse me, actually what we want is we just want the width. And we happen to want the width of both the parent and the thing called knob. Okay, so now we've got our master's width and we've got the knob's width. Now, in addition to that, we're going to do a little bit of math. And we want to take those two things and we want to subtract them from one another. And we can do that with this combined channels. Subtract. Pretty slick. Now that's that's pretty close to what to what we want so far. So I'm going to scoot this over just a skosh. I'm going to go ahead and drop a null in here. And you're going to be saying, "Well, this this is great, Matt, but uh, I don't I don't think I understand what we're doing yet." That's all right. We're going to use another math chop in here, and we're going to go ahead and combine that uh, with our panel. This thing actually represents the u value. If we look over here, we can see that's the u. So we've got our u happening. OK, great. So now what we want to do is we want to take this 0 to 1 and find a way to use that to express uh, one of these values over here. And then we're going to use that. Right, we're going to use this 317 as a way to clamp the range of this value. Right? So we want to be able to take this and figure out how to change 0 to 1 to instead be a representation of 0 to 317. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can do that with the range. Right? We've learned that manipulating this math. So we're going to come over here. We're going to export that right to our math. And now we should be able to see that we get a 0 to 317. Right? That looks pretty pretty slick so far. And then in our knob, instead of relying on this expression, we're going to go ahead and then export this value right here. There it is. Whew! It's pretty slick, kids looking pretty slick. So that's, you know, that might feel like a little bit of extra kind of like hassle than it's worth to you, and that's totally all right. If that's how you feel, I don't blame you for that in any one, in any like shape or form. Uh, in my opinion, it kind of makes this thing a little bit prettier uh, in its operation, but you're welcome to kind of like take it or leave it as you see fit. But it does mean that we get nice little boundaries here 
uh, in kind of a much prettier way. It also means we get one other piece of Python out of this uh, expression, or excuse me, out of this parameter, um, which, you know, is fractions of a millisecond, but that adds up over time, believe it or don't. Okay. So, we've got that, but as someone mentioned in class, that kind of binds us to the reality that what we get out of this, right, what we get out over here, now this is only expressed as 0 to 1. So, you know what, it, it still feels like we're not quite right. And that's right, we're going to insert a math. I'm going to just scoot a few things over here. So we don't have too many wires that are crossing. I like very pretty networks personally. That's just me. Um, and we can use this math, right? So we can use the range page of this to be able to control per operator what 0 is and what 1 represents. Now, I've already kind of done some of my uh, figuring here. So I know what it is that I want the, my boundaries to be. Um, but... So you can kind of follow along with this and then make some changes as you add new sliders. So I've got a min val and a max val. And I know for that my black level is going to be 0 and 1, and then again 0 and 1. Uh, my contrast, I'm going to keep it uh, 0 and 2.5. Mm. My hue offset, I want that to go from 0 to 360. And the rest of these are going to be zeros to ones. Oops. Now I'm going to dive right back in here to my master operator. And in these ranges, right? So again, we can rely on a little bit of addressing here. Op, up one, null one. I'm going to look for the row that is my parents' digits. And the column, in this case, that's called minval. And on the bottom, I want the maxval. So now what I should see, right, if I looked over here at, for example, I know that my hue offset's got a nice big boundary, a nice big range. I can see that goes 0 to 360. And the reason this is really valuable, right, like it seems like a little bit of kind of headache to set up, but it means that in the future, as I'm kind of experimenting and adding more sliders and bits to control this, now all I have to do is edit this table. And in editing, editing this table, I get more UI components that are automatically configured the way that I expect them to be. So that's, you know, that might not necessarily seem like a great big awesome thing here as we get started, but it is, in fact, tremendously powerful. Um, it makes building UIs much, much faster when we, all we have to do is kind of edit a, a, a table and then we get out of it uh, a UI piece kind of ready-made the way we expect it to be. Okay, so now that we've got kind of a preliminary UI piece set up, how can we connect uh, this set of bits over here and this set of bits over here to our actual output? All right, well, let's take a look at how we can make all of that work the way that we want to. And, you know, before, before we get too far away, let's, let's actually do one other clever thing to save us a little bit of headache. I didn't think about this when we were working the other day, but, you know, like all things, with a little bit of hindsight, you're able to come up with some other clever solutions. So in this case, my panel, right, I can actually rename things here. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and rename to the operator. I'm going to use again null 1 as my target. I want to look at my parent digits for the row and the column. I want my pretty name, or excuse me, my par name. And the last thing I have to do here is I have to confirm that I actually want that to be Python. Now, oops, I must have gotten something wrong. Let's double check. Par label, excuse me. Par label. So now I can see I've got 
uh, my parameter label kind of correctly set up here, black level, invert, etc., and that's going to make my life just a little bit nicer here in one second. So I'm going to go up one, I'm going to go up another one, and I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice this little window over here for a second. I'm going to swap that back to a network editor. I'm going to scooch that around a little bit. I'm going to dive right into my containers controls, and then I'm going to go right into my item one in this case. And then my output, I'm going to dive in here. And now I've got on the left hand side one of my controls, item one. And on the right hand side, I've got an output. I'm going to use a select chop in this case. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag one of these outs right on over here to the chop that I want to select as a relative path. Now, in this case, right, I could do one of these for every single one of these um, controls, and that wouldn't necessarily be the most efficient way to do that, but I certainly could do that. The other thing I can do is I can rely on the fact that I can use pattern matching here in these addresses to make that a little bit easier. So if I want everything that's got item in front, right, so item is all I care about for matching, what I can do is I can use item star, and that's going to go ahead and grab all of those controls for me. I'm going to go ahead and hook that up to a null. Lovely. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to view this. I can make this a little bit bigger here so I can kind of see it a little better. And I can start assigning these controls over to parameters. So black level, let's go ahead and move that over. We're going to export that. I'm going to export my invert. I'm going to export my contrast. Over here on my HSV adjust, I know that my, I'm going to use this to be my hue offset. Oh, I remembered back here on my level that on my range, I've got it in low. I've got it in high. I've got an out low. I've got an out high. All right. And that's pretty slick. I can close this, this and move up here. If I make this viewer active, right, I know that as I move around these parameters, I can actually see what that's doing to my operators, which is pretty all right. I'm feeling that. Okay. So, at this point, we've managed to get our controls working to drive the um, effects that we're doing on our banana. We've got our movie bin kind of set up so that we see it light up when we mouse over it. All right, it's pretty slick. Uh, and we also know that these things, if I'm playing down here, we can see that those videos play when I mouse over them. But now the next question is, how do I get it so that when I click on one of these, it populates the video over here. And that's what we're going to do next.